Hello everyone, welcome to From the Star Wars Home Video Library. I'm your host, Nathan P. Butler, and this time we are taking a look at a new release on its release day. I can't believe I managed to pull that off for one of the few times, you know, ever. And that is Rebels Season 3 on DVD and Blu-ray in the U.S. Now, we've seen this trend over time of basically, now that Walt Disney Home Video has control of home video releases of the Star Wars cartoon series, that they're sort of leaning in this direction of, Hey, dumbass, buy the Blu-ray. What the hell are you doing buying a DVD? Buy the Blu-ray. See, Blu-ray's cooler. Buy the Blu-ray, not the DVD. And so on and so on and so on. Um, to the point where we see usually a bigger distinction, at least in most fans' eyes, between what you'll get on DVD and what you'll get on Blu-ray when it comes to these cartoon series. Now, prior to that, Whenever it was Warner Brothers home video, uh, they were the ones putting out the Clone Wars cartoon series for seasons one through five. That was a little bit different because usually if you were going to have a bonus feature that only appeared on Blu-ray, it was the Jedi Temple Archive stuff. That was the bulk of it. And because many fans didn't ever really take the time to heavily explore that, they tended instead to explore more of the quick video featurette type things. A lot of fans didn't really feel much of a difference between DVD and Blu-ray, even though there was in terms of substantial actual content. Now it's a little more in your face, and it's been becoming more in your face with each subsequent Rebels season release. This time is the biggest divide between DVD and Blu-ray that we have seen basically ever when it comes to Star Wars, I think, at least in terms of the cartoon series. Not so much with the movies, of course, because the movie DVDs are pretty much bare bones at this point. But when we're talking about special features and Blu-ray versus DVD for cartoon series, oh yeah, we've got a bit of a gulf here. So, let's take a look at what we have. If you were to go to the store today or any time afterwards to find yourself a copy of Star Wars Rebels Complete Season 3, and you really should, more on that in a moment, because Rebels is getting better as it goes, uh, we have the DVD version. Star Wars Rebels Complete Season 3, again, no V on there, it's just Complete Season 3. And before I peel it off, we do have a sticker down here. The sticker says, Own the complete third season, plus go deeper with never-before-seen bonus. Get even more bonus on Blu-ray! So again, just like Season 2, the DVD for Season 3 is basically telling you, Hey, dumbass, buy the Blu-ray! What are you doing buying a DVD? Especially when it's only a few dollars difference, right? Uh, unlike in previous years where, going back to early Blu-ray era, they were a little bit more expensive as opposed to just a few bucks. So, we have our setup here with our cover. Uh, it is a little bit embossed, just a little tiny bit, which is kind of cool. So we have, of course, Sabine, we have Ezra, and, interesting choice, Maul there on the cover, with our other characters relegated to the bottom, with Zeb, Kanan, and Hera. Then over here, Thrawn, Governor Arhinda Price, and one of our Death Troopers. Now, as far as the lightsaber blade, we don't see a hilt down here, but we got this blade that just kind of runs up here, which is kind of cool because aside from separating at the bottom, notice it also separates the heroes from the villain up here at the top while they are still set together. And then we have the counterpoint of the dark saber over here. I think it's just a nice, well-designed image here. Now, of course, the top and bottom here are going to just be empty space because this is just a cardboard slip cover. So let's look at the sides. Here we have DVD, Star Wars Rebels, Complete Season 3, Picture of Ezra, Product Number. Same thing on the other side. Then the reverse. Images of course from the season, all your technical information down here at the bottom, text about the season, little window for the barcode, and up in the corner it notes what bonus features you get on DVD. You get a Rebel Alliance. It's about a six or seven minute little feature that focuses in on basically how Rebels is meant to tie in to Rogue One. Okay, um, It has clips from Rogue One, it talks about the connections and how the story group approached doing that and so forth. It's a pretty cool little feature. Uh, and it's a new feature. The other special feature on here, the other bonus feature, is something we've seen before if you bother to check out YouTube and such after episodes of Rebels actually airs, which is, as with the previous two seasons, and I do appreciate us having this, Rebels Recon. So every Rebels Recon episode for the season is on this set. You take off the slipcover, 
and what is underneath is effectively identical. Minus the fact, of course, that one of the sides that has something on it now is the opening. But otherwise, essentially identical. And in that clear case, like we've seen before, rather than a straight black DVD case, we pop that sucker open. I tend to use that phrase a lot, don't I? Pop that sucker open. Not just pop it open, but pop that sucker open. And we have here our Disney Movie Rewards points. Note this is not a digital copy. This is just Movie Reward points. And yes, I've already used the code on this one, duh. Um, but we have, uh, get your rewards now, Star Wars Rebels, and your code. Enter your code at DisneyMovieRewards.com. Copyright stuff at the bottom. And then the back just tells you about the movie rewards themselves, like what that whole program is all about. Then, of course, you have the discs that contain the season. And in the case of DVD, it is four. In the case of Blu-ray, it is three. We kick off DVDs with episodes one through six on a single disc with Ezra. Then episodes 7 through 11, 7 11, kind of lucky, or just looking for a slushy, with Sabine. Then episodes 12 through 17 with Thrawn, or Mithra Nuruodo. Then the final five, episodes 18 to 22 on disc 4 with Maul. Now, for what it's worth, the DVD presentation is just fine. There's nothing super wrong with it or anything like that. You're just going to find it doesn't have near the amount of bonus features that you get on Blu-ray. Because if you look back, you say, okay, when was the first time that we got a Star Wars cartoon series DVD slash Blu-ray release simultaneously coming from Disney instead of from Warner Brothers because of the whole Cartoon Network thing for Clone Wars? Well, it had to be Clone Wars The Lost Missions, which was basically season six. And what did we get? We got a DVD with a little bit of bonus feature. We got a Blu-ray with a little bit of bonus feature. But the Blu-ray was the one place you could find the story reels, if you were going to go on physical home media, for the Utapau arc, the Crystal Crisis on Utapau episodes, those unproduced story reels that were made available on StarWars.com and made available there on the Blu-ray, but not on the DVD. Fast forward to Rebels, we get Season 1. Season 1's Blu-ray set includes the four shorts that aired before Spark of Rebellion, before the first episode of the series. The DVD? No. Otherwise, same bonus features, but no, you don't get the four shorts. Thankfully for DVD owners or DVD uh, purchasers, you could already have bought the full one as opposed to split in two version of Spark of Rebellion on DVD, and it did have the three shorts on it. So they were out there, but not in the season set. Fast forward to Rebels Season 2. There's quite a few cool little special features. Nothing huge, but nice little special features. But what is the one that everybody who watched Season 2 of Rebels really wants to see? The one about Ahsoka and Anakin slash Vader coming together again in Twilight of the Apprentice and the impact of that and so forth. And that wound up being a Blu-ray exclusive, not available at all on DVD. So throughout all this time, they're basically saying, why are you buying a DVD? Slap, 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 buy the Blu-ray. And now it's even heavier. Bonus features, Rebels Recon and Rebel Alliance, which talks about the connection to Rogue One. Now let's look at the Blu-ray. The Blu-ray, very similar packaging here, got this sort of navy thing going across the top with the Blu-ray symbol, complete season three, Star Wars Rebels. We have another sticker here before I peel it off. This sticker reads, a must own for Star Wars fans. Includes exclusive bonus, Apprentice to Outcasts, Kenobi and Maul, Return to Mandalore, and more. Discover how Rebels ties into Rogue One and Star Wars A New Hope. Then underneath in little tiny quotes, a Rebel Alliance, which of course is the name of that featurette. You look at the packaging, very similar, just shorter, similar edges, Blu-ray instead of a DVD logo, same thing, similar back, except the box up here is much bigger because this one has a lot more special features. So, one featurette and Rebels Recon on DVD. If you get the Blu-ray, you get a Rebel Alliance and Rebels Recon, just like the DVD, but you also get Return to Mandalore, Thrawn, A Legend Reborn, Apprentices to Outcasts, Kenobi and Maul, and the original Rebel, Saw Gerrera Returns, Extended, plus five audio commentaries for individual episodes for Trials of the Darksaber, Legacy of Mandalore, Through Imperial Eyes, Double Agent, Droid, and Twin Suns. Sorry, having to look off my screen over here because no way I was going to remember which five episodes it was off the top of my head. Not on the first day of release, at least. It takes a while for me to get used to the information rattling around up here. 
Um, so basically, you have, let's see, one, two, three, four different full-blown featurettes running anywhere from three to seven minutes. Um, uh, the Saw Gerrera one is a little bit over three. The other ones are about seven minutes to six minutes or so each. Um, plus five episode commentaries on here that you don't get here with an overlap of one featurette and Rebels Recon. That's pretty friggin' substantial. That is the most they have leaned towards just giving the Blu-ray purchasers of one of these cartoon series a bunch of features and leaving them off the DVD that we have ever seen. That's uh, pretty substantial stuff. All right, so we open it up, or at least take the slip cover off. Similar underneath, not clear. Well, kind of clear, but that blue Blu-ray case, of course, no funky coloring like, say, Force Awakens was in black. Same kind of spine. We pop that sucker open, get to the Tootsie Roll Center of a Tootsie Pop or something, and we have, of course, our code again. Again, just reward points. Says the exact same thing as the other one. Backside, again, information about the program. And then we have our discs, again, three instead of four, so who gets left out? Well, we'll see. We have episodes one through eight on disc one with Ezra. We have episodes nine through 16 on disc two with Sabine. And then the rest of the episodes on disc three with Throwing them all, throwing them all, throwing them all. Come on. Think of how they promoted this season. It's Thrawn. By this point, Maul must have a real inferiority complex, because he's constantly being shoved aside for someone else. You can kind of picture him, like, trying to get onto a Blu-ray label, and he's wandering out in the desert wilderness, and finally he falls to his knees, and he's like, What is me? You'd have to remember the Kenobi thing to get it. But hopefully you will, because hopefully you've seen this season, or you're going to see it now that it's on home video. Now, of course, it wouldn't be a season of Rebels getting a release if there wasn't a big-ass complaint for me about the way they handle the season opener. Because once again, for no logical reason, and in a way that makes it jarring to watch, they decided that on disc one, for Blu-ray and DVD... They took Steps Into Shadow, which of course was the season opener, which aired as a single, double-length episode, and cut that bitch right down the middle. Again. Why? That's not how it was meant to be seen. You played it for us on TV the way it was meant to be seen. No one tells you when you put it on Blu-ray or DVD that it's gotta be two pieces instead of one. Why not give it to us the way that you seem to be suggesting it was meant to be seen? Especially given what happens when you try to watch it. So, I can't show you the original versus the new, because we're in a situation here where the original version, as far as I can tell, is only available through things like iTunes and whatnot, and I'm not able to capture that right now on this computer. So, I'll just describe it to you, because frankly, there isn't a lot that's changed when they run one into the other uh, for the original airing versus what we got on the two parts. So as it was originally aired as one whole that ran about 40 some odd minutes, basically at the midpoint, they're going to get the Y-Wings and they find out that the Y-Wings are in the process of being destroyed. They've got to get it now. There's no time to contact Hera and see what to do next or anything like that. And Ezra's like, you know, I'm pulling rank. It's my mission. And I'm giving an order, blah, blah, blah. To which Sabine says, yes, sir, in kind of a who are you kidding kind of voice. And then we see the ghost flying through the clouds down towards the Y-Wings. When they split it into two parts, that shot of them flying down to go get the Y-Wings is actually shown at the beginning of part two. That is the opening shot of part two, then it goes straight into the rest of part two. Okay? Part one does end with seeing them, after she says, yes sir, going down through the clouds, but it's an alternate shot. So you have a different new added shot of them flying down through the clouds at the end of part one that wasn't there before because there's no sense of having two establishing shots that look very similar as they fly through the clouds. So in a sense, they've just added a scene for us or added a shot at least for us, but they've made it kind of jarring to watch because now, of course, that episode just ends. Uh, yes, sir. It's over. And then you start part two. And Rebels doesn't do any of this last time on Star Wars Rebels kind of stuff. So if you're just watching that episode by itself, you're like, what the hell is going on? Why, why are they going after Y-Wings? I missed something somewhere. No, you didn't. They split the damn thing in half. But now, of course, they need a place to put the title card and the <laughs> thing at the beginning of the episode. So what they do is you have the moment, of course, uh, early on in that second half 
where Zeb has to save Rex from falling out of the Phantom, and it does kind of a spin, and it's damaged by a droid, and it means like, we're going down! And they start kind of heading down through the atmosphere, and you see Ezra kind of freaking out and shaking because of it, and then it switches to a shot of the damaged Phantom flying. The new bam ba da da bam bam as I call it, the title card, is slipped in between the shot of Ezra and the shot of the clouds. So in essence, kind of like what happened uh, with Siege of Lothal, we have an extra shot given to us. Yay! But because we don't have a previously on type segment, it really makes part two feel kind of disjointed. Watching them back to back on the DVD or the Blu-ray, no big deal. Trying to watch them as individual episodes and figure out the logic of why on earth they decided to do it that way instead of keeping it as one whole, it feels very illogical and kind of dumb. Very much like what happened with seasons one and two. So the same complaint continues. So I guess we could say, hey, score one for consistency. <sighs> but consistency isn't everything. Sometimes it's about quality. A serial killer is consistent. I'm not sure you want to be out there praising him for doing it over and over again. Anyway, uh, beyond that, we do get a quick uh, sneak peeks link, which gives us a uh, glimpse, of course, at a trailer. In this case, it's a trailer for The Last Jedi, the same one that was revealed at Celebration in 2017. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So we have here a solid Blu-ray release, a solid DVD release, but the Blu-ray certainly has a lot more to it, so I would highly recommend that over the DVD, even if it's not a matter of picture and sound quality. And personally, I'm about that, so I would definitely watch on Blu-ray rather than DVD. Just know that if you want the best bonus features, it's gotta be Blu-ray. And if you want Steps into Shadow as a single episode, physical home media is not going to do it for you. You're going to need to go to somewhere like iTunes and get it that way. Thankfully, I guess, kind of, these are not presented in that theatrical aspect ratio of the home video releases of The Clone Wars because Rebels wasn't produced that way. Rebels was produced as 16 by 9 So, in essence, you're seeing the same thing on an HD version of Steps into Shadow from, say, iTunes as you would on Blu-ray. Albeit with the fact that physical media, without the vagaries of streaming, tends to have a more consistent, crisper quality to it because it's not worrying about streaming speeds and things like that. Uh, I would highly recommend it to check out. And this is what I said I'd come back to. I have friends. And, well, you're like, he has friends? Holy shit. Yes, I have friends. Um, some of these friends uh, are really into the older Star Wars continuity that we now know as Star Wars Legends. The official continuity previously, before it was sort of relegated to an alternate universe type status. Uh, the continuity that grew from 1991 up until around early 2014 that is still getting little tiny bits added into it from uh, Star Wars The Old Republic, but otherwise isn't being added to uh, the stuff that eventually wound up encompassing stuff going all the way back to the 1976 adaptation of A New Hope and so forth. And some of these friends absolutely flat out refuse to give Rebels a shot. Some of them won't even watch The Force Awakens or Rogue One, but they absolutely refuse to give Rebels a shot. Uh, some of them because they love the Clone Wars so much. Really, there was a lot to love about the Clone Wars at the end. I'm not sure about the beginning. Um, but uh, they love the Clone Wars so much, and they're just so angry that it was ended to make way for Rebels that they refuse to watch Rebels. Or, it's on a bigger picture, sort of the same attitude. They're so angry that the Legends continuity had to essentially come to a halt or slow down. Or, as Andrew Gilbertson put it, I think it was, uh, very well in a recent uh, email to Star Wars Beyond the Films, one of the podcasts that I host with uh, Mark Herleman, the death of its relevance took place. Not that it died, because it is still growing by teeny tiny bits, but its death of relevance to a large degree died off. And that they're so angry about that, they refuse to give Rebels a chance. And I think that if that's the case, then you're really kind of missing out. If you are someone who's still kind of on that, I don't want to dive into the new canon stuff, or the story group canon stuff, if you're going to check out anything, I would suggest check out the films, I would probably say go and check out Rogue One before The Force Awakens because The Force Awakens is going to be one that is more jarring to the sensibilities of someone who does not want to give the new canon a chance because it is more different in its era uh, in relation to what we would have expected in the Legends continuity in that same time period uh, than say Rogue One is jarring to those who follow Legends in that time, although it's a different mission to get the Death Star plans. But hell, what's one more in Legends, right? There was already like five or six or seven or 20 of them. Um... 
But Rebels is the thing I would say to try beyond trying out just maybe one film. Because I think that if you like the Clone Wars, the carryovers from Clone Wars will help draw you into Rebels. Uh, characters like Ahsoka, characters like Rex, uh, Maul's arc continuing, uh, the arc of Mandalore continuing. And this really feels like a season in which Rebels kind of flourished. Because it was good for season one, stronger for season two, it feels stronger here. And it manages to do justice to a character who is brought in from Legends, Thrawn. Uh, and given his own canonical interpretation. Uh, though, again, for some, that'll rub them the wrong way because he should never have been brought over. He was Legends, and that is Sarcosanct, etc. Um, I'm someone who is willing to enjoy multiple continuities of any kind of franchise I have fun with, anything that I enjoy. So now that Star Wars has two main continuities, plus all the little ones like Infinities and New Hope and stuff like that that's out there, I'm able to continue enjoying. But I know for some... There's like a barrier there because of expectations, frustration, and disappointment. If you are trying to step into this broader world of what Star Wars is now, then maybe you don't need to read the books. Maybe you don't need to check out the comics or, or play the little mobile games and stuff like that. But if you really want to kind of get a sense of the heart of kind of what's going on now, Rebels is a big part of that. And it takes what was some of the best stuff to come from Clone Wars and the strongest storytelling styles of Clone Wars and really brings that to the fore again, and improves upon it, in my opinion, to give you this series. Um, Ezra has come a long way from being the riffraff Lothrat that everybody was comparing to Aladdin. Um, he really uh, is now sort of a, a heavier character in his own right and a little more interesting. So, just a thought. We're three seasons in. There's one final season to go of Rebels. Now is a perfect time, if you are not someone who's bothered to try Rebels, to perhaps give it a try. Maybe you'll like it, maybe you'll hate it, but at least you're not missing out on something in a situation where you don't really know what you're missing out on because you haven't taken the time to try it out. Um, give it a shot if that happens to be you. Um, so with that, we'll wrap up this episode and hopefully give you a chance to go out and pick these up if you are interested in either of them. They are available as of today, August 29th, 2017. Thank you for watching, and may the Force be with the home video viewers.